So let's take a look at what we call the Wiggers diagram. So this diagram here is called the Wiggers diagram. What it is, it's a pictorial representation of the cardiac cycle. So everything that happens during one heartbeat, that is represented here on this graph. And so if we look at the axes while we're orienting ourselves, down here on the x-axis we have time. And so you notice that it goes from 0 to only 0.8 of a second. So this whole cardiac cycle, this heartbeat, happens in less than a second. So there's a lot of stuff going on here, as you can see on this graph. And so we can take our time and go through it, because I know that when I learned this, it was one of the most confusing things I'd learned in cardiovascular physiology. So on the y-axis here, we have pressure in this part, from 0 to 120 millimeters of mercury, which is typically how we measure blood pressure, uh, millimeters of mercury. Then in this part of the y-axis, we have left ventricular volume in milliliters. We look at an ECG down here, which is an electric trace. It's a trace of the electrical activity of the heart muscle. And down at the bottom, we're going to look at heart sounds. Across the top, we have the seven phases of the cardiac cycle. Okay, so let's talk about atrial pressure. So that's going to be this purple line here that we trace, that we follow along. So let's start. So we're in phase one, we're in atrial contraction, and the atrium, let's say the left atrium, I mean both of them are, but let's just talk about the left atrium now, is going to contract. And so when it contracts, the pressure, remember this is measuring pressure here, increases. So it increases to about here, and then the atrium starts to relax a little bit. The muscle starts to relax, so we decrease in pressure. And as we've decreased in pressure here, the pressure in the ventricle now, the left ventricle, has overtaken the pressure in the left atrium. So now the pressure in here is greater than the pressure in here. And so that forces the mitral valve, well that helps to force the mitral valve shut. And so here, we can just write MV, mitral valve, closes. Okay. Now let's continue on our atrial pressure line. We actually increase in pressure again. Now how is that possible, you might ask? Well, let's take a look. So we know that this valve is closed, and we know that right now we are in contraction. We're in isovolumetric contraction of the left ventricle. So as this left ventricle contracts, it pushes blood up here into the aorta, through the aorta, but it also pushes blood against the mitral valve which causes the mitral valve to bulge up a bit. It doesn't open, but it does bulge up into the left atrium a bit, and that increases the pressure in the left atrium. Once the blood has ejected from the left atrium into the outflow tract uh, up the aorta, the pressure can come back down in the atrium. So then it's pretty constant low for quite a while, relatively speaking. Remember, all this is happening over 0.8 seconds, so not very long. Then we enter isovolumetric relaxation phase, and the pressure in the atrium goes up. And why does it go up? It goes up because the left atrium is being filled again. So the left atrium is being filled again. And then it fills and fills and fills until the pressure in the left atrium overtakes the pressure in the left ventricle. So at this point, the pressure in the left atrium overtakes the pressure in the left ventricle, and that mitral valve gets pushed open. So this mitral valve gets pushed open, comes down, and allows blood to get uh, dumped into the left ventricle again. And so because blood is now allowed to flow through, the pressure in the left atrium goes down again because now it's being able to empty itself of blood. So next we'll trace the left ventricular pressure line. So let's get the right color here. So during atrial contraction, the pressure in the left ventricle is actually going to raise a bit. And the reason it raises is because 
blood is rushing from the left atrium into the left ventricle. And so that blood is going to hit the walls of the ventricle and increase the pressure within the ventricle. As the left atrium fills the left ventricle with blood, though, pressure time comes down a bit. And that's because the blood isn't necessarily hitting the walls. It's just sort of filling the, it's dripping into the rest of the blood. And so that doesn't sort of exert the same pressure on the walls than it, that it did previously. And so you remember from before, at this point, the mitral valve closes. So here the mitral valve has closed. Then we enter isovolumetric contraction. In isovolumetric contraction, the left ventricle is actually going to start to contract. And when the ventricle starts to contract, it increases the pressure in that chamber. And so here we see a huge increase in pressure until this point here. And at this point, the pressure in the chamber has sort of built up enough to allow blood to push from the left ventricle into across the aortic valve into the aorta. And so we push into the aorta and keep building pressure in the left ventricle because we're still in the middle of our contraction here. So we've ejected so much blood in this portion that you can't really generate that much pressure with the remaining blood. So the pressure wave goes down to about here. And at this point, the pressure in the aorta is higher than the pressure in the left ventricle. So that forces this aortic valve to shut. At that point, the AV aortic valve closes. And here, AV opened. Forgot to write that in. AV open, AV closes. And then we keep lowering in pressure because we're in our relaxation phase. Remember, this is a ventricle. So as the ventricle relaxes, it's lowering in pressure. And then it stays pretty steady until the next cardiac cycle. So let's talk about aortic pressure now. So the aortic pressure is going to be this pink line up at the top. And what we're dealing with is the pressure in this vessel here, the aorta. And so our aortic pressure from the start is already on its way down. And it's already on its way down because blood has just sort of traveled through it and is traveling away. The pressure wave of blood from the previous cardiac cycle is traveling away from the aorta. And so the pressure is decreasing. It decreases to a point where the aortic valve actually opens. So this pressure on this side, of the, so here's the valve here, and the pressure on this side of the valve decreases so much that this, the pressure in the left ventricle overtakes it, and blood is allowed to flow through that valve as it opens. So here we go, aortic valve opens, and then we're in rapid ejection phase. So as the blood from the left ventricle ejects out through the aorta, the pressure in the aorta then rises in response to that blood. It rises because of that blood. And then, so it rises to this point here, up at the top right here, in rapid ejection. And then we hit the reduced ejection phase. So at reduced ejection, remember, we've already ejected most of our blood. And so we just have a little bit left to send out. And because of that, we're going to drop in pressure. We drop in pressure so much that the aortic valve closes. When the aortic valve closes, then we sort of just taper off in pressure. Taper off in pressure until the next cardiac cycle, where we do it all again. 